Business on Purpose Podcast. Welcome in, everybody. It's Scott Beebe with the Business on Purpose platform. We are here for one reason every single week, and that is to help liberate you from the chaos of working in your business. We are committed to helping you do that. We've got a great topic today that we're going to be talking about how to find an implementer. Every owner needs an implementer, and you need to be able to find yours. Before we get started, make sure to check us out right there on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can go to our podcast, My Business on Purpose podcast is right there for you as well, and uh, we love to be able to serve you in these ways. All right, let's dive in, everybody. We've got a lot to talk about here just in the very next uh, few minutes. So every owner needs an implementer. Starting out in the survival stage of your business meant that you have spent most of your days dreaming and doing and making sure that everything is being held together, right? Uh, Growth slowly begins to creep in. For some of you, growth quickly crept in. But for most of us, it slowly creeps in. And before you know it, you're really maxed out. You're kind of out of your head and not knowing how to get it all done in a 24-hour period. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about Jason. Jason has spent uh, years on the hamster wheel. And his health and his family are starting to really pay the price. Now, this picture of Jason is not real, but the story about Jason is... Of course, he's coming to, uh, to, to be able to access some cash and resources uh, because business owners usually have access to some level of cash, even though it's not all theirs. But here's the check. He's got absolutely no time to enjoy any of it with his family. Part of the reason Jason started his business in the first place, the reason you started your business in the first place, is to create more margin, more space to be able to spend more time with his family and more time giving to the passions that he and his wife share But instead, Jason is spending the majority of his time with other families, a lot of times with your family because he's doing home services work. And because of it, he's neglecting his own maintenance at his own house and his own family. So the question is, how do you jump off the hamster wheel? How do we get off of this nonsensical thing that we've jumped into and this job that we've created for ourselves that we don't really like that much? And how do we get back to that widely promoted reality of uh, that we get preached to as entrepreneurs to say, hey, you can be your own boss. You can set your own hours. Well, there's a high likelihood that as a business owner, you have a very driven personality. You're a dreamer, a pioneer. You're a thinker who's kind of out there. You take risk. And a lot of times you fire before you've ever really aimed. It's kind of the nature of a business owner. Now, aiming's important. But you don't have to be the one uh, doing all the aiming all the time. So the question we've got to ask ourselves is ultimately, how do we begin to find someone to complement your skills and your responsibility as an owner? That's that implementer personality. How do you work with that person in a way that doesn't drive them crazy and doesn't drive you crazy? And then for goodness sake, I think the next logical question is, how in the world do you afford them? So before we dive into that question, what I want to do first is I want to step back for a minute. I want you to take a deep breath. Although it may feel like your world is imploding and the kind of the chaos of the business is covering you up, I just want you to remember that the world is not imploding. Yesterday at the time of this recording, the New York Stock Exchange dropped within, I think, the first 30 minutes of trading over 2,000 points. Now, at the time of this recording in 2020, it's the largest historic drop in one day ever So much so that they had to shut the market down for about 15 to 20 minutes. But guess what? Even though their world might be imploding, the world's not. The sun still came up this morning. The sun, in all probability, is going to go down tonight. The tide in this super moon that we've got going on right now has come in, and the tide here in just a few hours is going to go out. The rain's still going to come. The rain's still going to go. The world continues on. In most businesses that operate with great purpose, there is a visionary who needs to understand the world is not imploding. And in every business, there needs to be what we would classify as an implementer. Dan Sullivan would call this person a project manager. It's not the same as a construction project manager. It's somebody who can manage the ideas and the projects that come from the visionary in order to get them to the doers so that they can get done. Now, in most cases in your business, you are the visionary, which means that in most cases, you are on the hunt for an implementer. But where are they? And how do you find them? 
So let's talk about the role of a visionary and what that role looks like. It's actually pretty straightforward. For those of you on the podcast who can't see this, it's just a big red squiggly line. The role of visionary is straightforward. A dreamer, a pioneer, a seer, a pusher. You're trying your best to describe what you've concocted in words that the implementer can understand, but a lot of times it just comes out as this kind of squiggly nonsense to most people, even though you can see it so clearly. So what the implementer does is they take this idea... And then they're able to distill that. They're taking all this jumbled, fast mess and this collection of words and ideas and concepts that you can see real clearly. They take it back to their workstation and they go to work in three major areas. First, the implementer translates all of your dreams and ideas into an articulate form so other people can understand it. Next, the implementer begins the hard work of distilling all that vision down into a collection of systems and processes and easy-to-digest implementables. Essentially, what they're doing is they're packaging the vision into a brand that the doers can understand and go to work in. Third, the implementer then embeds this new vision package into the rhythm of the doer team. Now, notice I said doer team. That's a team of doers. It's a team of people who, if man, if they heard the vision come straight out of the visionary's mouth, it, it would just be nonsense to them. But instead, this implementer can package all of that into a doing package so the doer team can get things done via team meetings, 12-week plans, dashboards, and reporting so that progress can begin towards the destination, a la that vision that the, uh, that the visionary has come in and set. Finally, the implementer updates both the visionary and the doers of the progress towards the vision while the implementer heads back out to the pioneering wild west to the open country to see what other visions await in an effort to constantly exercise their mission and keep the business fresh. So it starts to where you've got this jumbled mess of an idea. It goes to the implementer. The implementer puts it into these systems and processes, then packages it so that the doers can do it in the package so that the visionary can go back out and think about new ideas. So the question is, how do we afford the implementer? Well, what you do is you begin saving right now. You set up a separate bank account. If you don't have your multiple bank accounts, you need to set those up. But you set up a separate bank account called the new hire account. You literally have a bank title that says new hire account and you take the salary that you think you'll have to pay an implementer and you start to deposit it in that account every month. Hey, listen, if you don't have enough to deposit every month, deposit what you can. And if you don't have enough to do it every month, then you know that you're not ready to hire them. But that does not mean that you're not ready to go on the hunt for them. Because as you accrue the money in that new hire account, it'll begin to provide the confidence that you need. In the meantime, you can go out on the hunt for your implementer. You write your job role. You begin to look for that person and personality who's going to be able to complement with yours, that visionary. You need somebody who can complement with the visionary. You don't need another visionary. You need to find somebody who can understand and translate vision to everybody else. What do they look like? They're going to be the ones dressed in the variegated colors of vision, the muted colors of process, and the pleasant colors of collaboration. Hey, as always, we want you to be able to join us in what we're doing. We offer our coaching to you. If you'll check us out at freedom.mybusinessonpurpose.com, where we can help you let your business burn. We want you to stop putting out fires, discover purpose, and build a business that matters. Why? So that you can be liberated from the chaos of working in your business and you can get your life back. Check us out at freedom.mybusinessonpurpose.com, also on our Business on Purpose web, uh, podcast. It's called the My Business on Purpose podcast, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our LinkedIn channel. We'd love to see you there and let us know how we can best serve you. Have a great day, everybody.